All right, guys, so you all have been waiting for this video. Why did I buy this car over the SI? And what are the main reasons that I did not buy the SI? If you saw my previous videos, you'll know that I mentioned there are two significant issues with the 2023 Honda Civic SI that I want to address here. The first one I talked about in my last video, and that was the dealer markup. This car didn't actually have a line item, as you'll see here on the um, the paper, but there is markups in other forms on it as far as you being forced to buy a $2,500 wheel and tire protection package, pay $1,000 for their crappy ceramic coating from the dealer that lasts literally two days probably when you drive away, and other items on there that you can't uh, you know, decipher of what they mean. So all in all, that this SI, this white SI at this dealer was $35,000 before any fees added on. So you're talking 38, 39,000 with New York state tax to get this car out the door. A few days later, I checked out this beautiful Sonic Gray SI at the same dealer that I bought my Civic Sport hatch from. And keep in mind, I got this car for MSRP at this dealer. They were not marking up this car because they didn't see it to be as special as the other car, but they knew how rare it was. So they had a lot of people interested and luckily I was the first one to put my deposit down. So this car actually blew me away with what they wanted to charge for it. I took a look at the window sticker and almost fell over here. If you'll take a look and saw the markup below the wheel locks at $7,500 on the Civic Si. This is not a Type R. They wanted $38,000 for this car before fees. So in New York State where I live, I was looking at $41,000 to $42,000 out the door pricing on the Civic Si. Now let's come back to this car. This car was right around 30 out the door. So you're talking over a $10,000 difference to get an Si versus this car. Makes no sense to me. And if you are one of the suckers out there paying anything over, I don't care if you paid $1,000 over MSRP for an Si, you got screwed, I'm telling you, because those cars are not worth a dime over MSRP. I'm sorry I might hurt feelings in the comments right now for you guys watching if you do have an SI, but if you got an SI at MSRP, I applaud you. You can find them at certain dealers, but you're probably gonna have to travel. So the dealer markups in my area, and I, I don't have time to travel. I have two young girls. I have a one and two year old at home. There's no time in my life to go travel and try to hunt down an SI at markup. I needed a new car and I wanted to get a new car. I didn't want to spend all the time hunting with dealers. Let's be honest, messing around with dealers is the least fun experience anyone can have. You just want to get your new car with no games played. And that is why I went with this trim and didn't get the SI. But believe it or not, all the, all the talk and all the ranting I just did about the MSRP uh, markup on the cars is not the main reason I didn't buy one. I may have taken a little longer to look around, may have not, I'm not sure. But once I took a seat in that white SI at the first dealer I looked at, I was pretty excited. I love the way the interior look, you'll see here, I'm just taking a look at my natural driving position. However, as you'll see here, this is the main game changer for me in the SI. So right there you'll see, I'm just checking to make sure the seat is all the way down now. You can see my this is my natural driving position with my hands. In the lowest seating position in my driving position. I'm six foot three, and this car has less headroom than any other Civic I've been in. My 2010 LX doesn't have a sunroof, but if you guys follow my channel and you're an OG way back, um, 10 years on my channel, you'll know I had an FA5 Civic Si that had the sunroof and I had significantly more headroom in that car. I could wear a helmet in that car with the sunroof. But guys, this new SI, they designed the headliner to be so bubbly and so low in that car that it, it touched my head in my normal seating position. So if I were to like stretch my back or, or do anything while I was driving, I'd be mashing my head into the headliner. So that's where I drew the line. So if there wasn't that significant design flaw with that car, I may have tried to hunt for one more. However, I'm really glad I got this one because it's got the K20 naturally aspirated engine up front, which I've continued to rave and talk a lot about in my previous videos, but it's a port injected K20, so it's gonna outlast the SI. You know, neither car is fast, so why not take reliability over speed? So the Honda website shows the new Civic SI as having 37.6 inches of headroom, and in the rear of the car, you have 37.1. You literally get a half inch more headroom up front than you do in the rear. That is pathetic in my opinion. If I'll take you guys on a tour here and show you how much headroom I have in this car. This car is rated at 39.4, I believe, inches of headroom or 39.3 on the Honda website. 
which is awesome because in my natural driving position, I have like an inch and a half to two inches. I could wear a helmet easily in this car, even though I'm probably not going to take it to any autocrosses and track days anytime soon, but I could easily wear a helmet. I have plenty of room, nothing for my head to hit on. Life is good. So the old SI I had, the 2007 of this generation, had the sunroof. That is listed online as 38.1 inches of headroom, even though it felt like more. Maybe the seats were softer and you sank into them a little more on the uh, older 8th gen SIs, but uh, it felt like way more than a half inch more headroom. It's like I said, guys, a half inch more headroom up front than in the rear is is really bad in a new car that's supposed to be getting bigger in size, and they are bigger in size. The new SI is a lot larger. You know, it's it's several inches longer than the older older generation SIs, and, and they're giving you less and less room inside to fit us taller guys. So um, the ironic thing is, if you want a stick shift Civic, in an 11th gen stick shift Civic at all, just you want a stick, you have to get this car if you're tall. Or you want to, if you want to spend over $50,000, you can get the Type R. Because the Type R is a hatch and it doesn't have a sunroof. So you're going to get the same amount of headroom in a Type R as you do in this car. But if you want a Sport Touring, you can't get a Sport Touring without the sunroof. So same headroom issue in the Sport Touring. But the SI is the only manual sedan we can get in 2023, 2022. You guys know, no other Civic sedan has the manual. And there's no option to not have a sunroof on an SI. So the, the fact of going with the hatchback isn't something I loved at first. You know, I'm always a sedan guy. I've always had a sedan. I like the being able to just slam the trunk and not care and stuff whatever you need in that isolated area in the back. Now the hatch is kind of one with the car, so you kind of have to be more careful with what you slam the hatch on. It could shatter the rear window very easily if you weren't careful. It's not a deal breaker. I still like the fact, I like the way this car looks. I do, you know, I do love the new way the SI looks too. I think the rear end on the sedan is very nice. Um, almost a little bit better than the rear end in this car. I do like the taillights a little bit better on this car. I think they little, look a little sexier on this car, but um, the sedan rear end is really, really sweet on the SI. I love the way it looks. The taillights on the SI look really, really good too. But yeah, that's my rant, guys. Uh, that's the main reason I didn't buy the new SI is headroom. They really screwed us over. If you're over six foot, definitely should go check one out and sit in it. And if you plan to do any kind of autocross or, or DEs in it, you know, track days in it, Make sure you account for an extra inch you're going to need for a helmet. So thanks guys for watching. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think uh, about my rant here and the main reasons I didn't buy one. You know, like I said, MSRP and the headroom. I had to, you know, that right there I stopped. I may have found some more reasons to dislike it if I actually got to drive one, but I never even took it that far. Uh, just a really bad situation we are in with cars these days as far as getting an affordable, you know, practical daily and especially if you're a taller guy like me kind of get screwed over even more so i was stuck with this but not too upset about it still a very nice car i'm glad i got it and i'm glad i got it for a reasonable price so thanks guys always for watching i'll see you in the next one